Hi everyone, Andy here again. So uh, the second step in this daily creation process with Resolve, after we've already synced our audio and ported our footage, synced the audio, uh, is to apply some color correction or a lookup table to my uh, my images. So uh, here I am in Resolve. My audio is synced into Conform tab. I feel good about that. This is the auto sync uh, area um, there. I'm going to go to color now and apply some corrections. So. Uh, I have two. I have three different clips here on the timeline. Uh, the first two are, uh, can, are from the Canon camera, the C500. The first one's uh, Canon RAW. The second one here is a standard DPX video sequence, and the last one is a uh, RAW clip from the uh, Blackmagic camera. So uh, the Blackmagic camera clip we'll look at first because it is a RAW format that can be adjusted right here inside of the uh, Blackmagic software. So uh, if you look at the different little tabs here. The last one says camera, essentially, uh, camera raw material. And I can, in that, I can start making adjustments to that raw material uh, before I do any kind of additional color grading. So if I come here and I say, let's change it, uh, there's different, the decode, the decode settings are here. I can say, hey, you know what, just do it per clip basis. And then I can say, well, you know what, I don't want you to do it in 709, which is what it's doing by default. By just out of the box, it just converts that raw data, right? 709, that's why it looks so crunchy here already in the viewfinder and say, hey, you actually show me that material in Blackmagic uh, film, sort of like a log mode, Blackmagic uh, design film look. So I could, I could go that if I wanted to, or I could stick with 709 for a daily's use, which could be a good thing. I could also play with the color temperature here if I wanted to, uh, tint, you know, uh, tint settings and other things I could do as well. I could also increase the exposure a little bit, essentially change in the ISO here in post. So. This is the uh, this is the process of doing that. Um, so great, say I like that way that looks, and that's what I want to output, and I'm okay with 709. I wouldn't want to grade this way, but maybe I'm okay for daily use. This is fine. We can go on now. All the other raw material, well, most other raw material like Red Raw, Airy Raw, Sony Raw, will have this same sort of palette for messing with the raw material before you grade. Canon Raw is a little bit different. If I go to Canon Raw. It, it, it sees it more like a DPX file. It's basically because Canon does a lot of processing before the raw material comes in to it, before it records the raw data. So I can't really do this kind of adjustment here. I can still though, apply a lookup table and you know do all, and make color adjustments. That's what the other menu is doing anyway. It just it's not here in this menu anymore. Uh, I come back to here and I can say, okay, well you know what I want to do to this material is apply a lookup table and Resolve uh, has some built-in lookup tables right click on it and say let's put a 1D lookup table on it and I'll say okay well Canon log look that that's it Canon log is a standard mode in the Canon cameras and when you when that raw data is processed it becomes Canon log so this is raw but it becomes Canon log so I can apply a Canon log to video mode here if I want to and that LUT will apply in a second and there you go it changed a little bit you see the result maybe I want to just you know lower my blacks a little bit still and do some other things that, the raw material is a little hard for my computer to keep up with, so it takes a little while to react. But there we go. Say we like that look. Up, that look great. Let's move on to the next clip here. I'll right click on that and apply that same result. Now this this the other clip here uh, is also in Canon Log, but it's traditional traditional video, so a little easier for my computer to handle. Again, Canon Log to video. It's a simple 1D LUT, and I may again do something like increase the saturation to that image and or the black level, whatever I want to do here. You know, I can tweak the, the tweak the white balance a little bit just by adjusting the gains, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, easy enough to do. I don't do that, that's a little much. But you get the idea, I can do some, I can make some minor adjustments here, whatever I want it to do for a quick dailies result. There's that, that's done. Uh, finally, I could uh, uh, add some other things to the image at this point if I wanted to. Uh, I could add some burn-ins, this little burn-in label here. For dailies, I often want burn in, so I can put things like source time code on the screen. I can also put uh, source file name on the screen if I wanted it there, you know, recorded file name, etc. I can put this information on the screen, which actually burn into the daily. So I can turn that on right here in the little burn in section, change the color, change the position, etc., etc. A lot of options for burn ins. Uh, in the case of that 4K clip, again, uh, I may want to scale it slightly. Um, uh, because it is a uh, 4096 wide, so when you output uh, 1080 video, it will sort of be cropped, as you can see, top and bottom here. So I could, if I wanted to, actually just apply a little bit of zoom here to that image, and it would actually zoom it in to get rid of that crop, or or whatever. I could leave it alone if I wanted to. By default, it'll fit the it'll fit it uh, horizontally into the image. 
And there you go, you see it's, uh, no, it's, it's stretched out now. So let's say we like that result, we're happy with this. Uh, the color's looking okay, eh, you know, could be a lot better. Uh, but you get the idea, uh, this is something I could do uh, if I wanted. Okay, these adjustments that I could play with if I wanted. Uh, a little bit more, you know, eh, being picky, there we go, a little bit better already. Uh, let's say we're happy with those results. Now let's go to the delivery stage. So color correction applied, let's add it. Whatever we want to do here, it's pretty straightforward with that, you know, right click, 1D, 3D, LUT, whatever I have. If I've created LUTs, we have LUTs on our website, you can download and apply here as well. If you like that, great. So next step is to actually output this into something we can actually sort of edit in, right? Um, the, the whole idea of dailies is uh, beyond just seeing on set, there's a quickly, quick turnaround, because I may want to be able to hand this off the post for uh, editorial purposes. So to do that, I'm going to go to the delivery tab here, uh, and then I'll go ahead and uh, start making some adjustments to the render settings. So I want to make a QuickTime file in ProRes 422. That's a popular format, so I'll do that, ProRes 422, regular, because we want to keep it pretty small. My frame rate should be 23976, that's what I shot in. Um, Audio better be on, so render the audio. That's the whole point of syncing the audio. Um, I want to generate two channels of audio. That's all I had, so that's fine. Uh, render timeline as. I'm going to set this to individual source clips. So each clip gets its own uh, render result. I don't want to have one giant uh, finished product. I want several clips rendered out. Uh, that's great. That's nice. Uh, okay, I'm happy with that. If you wanted to, I could actually create an additional output, like DPX or DNX HD, whatever I want, just by clicking this little button here, that'll add an extra output. But I'm happy just with ProRes, so I won't do that. File names, I want the file names to match my original file names, so I'm going to say use source file name. I'm keeping file names the same between dailies and original is a great metadata. Keep that alive, that's a good idea. Uh, great, that's it. Let's see, I like that. I'm just going to choose finally a render job to area. I'm going to choose my Thunderbolt. And I'll say render output folder here. Great. Awesome. Add the job to my queue. And when I'm ready, I can start the render process. And this is going to take a little while with that 4K footage especially. So we'll just, uh, we'll just uh, speed things along here for the video. All right. It's done now. There we go. We're all done. Took a little bit of time. Only a couple minutes there. It's pretty short clips. Some clips took longer than others. But uh, we're good to go. And now I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, open up my rendered folder here. Uh, put it in a render folder. Uh, my Thunderbolt drive, render output, there it is. And my three clips are there. MOV format, there's that guy. Here's the original 4K content. And then here's my Blackmagic clips all together. So three clips, and they all play back just fine. They're all ProRes now. Test audio. One, two, audio. One, two, Blackmagic camera, raw. Complete. Right, there we are, synced up, ready to go. Pretty straightforward. So, so that's it. Uh, creating dailies with Resolve, not too bad. Uh, I hope I helped you uh, get through those first couple of steps of this program. It, the Resolve Lite is free, it's worth checking out. Uh, you can, again, you can use this with any log material, uh, any raw material that Resolve will support. So, it works for a lot of applications. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.